Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salam Khan here, and today we see the topic of the transformation of the independent variable. Now this heading I gave from 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 the beginning because this was a longer one, and I thought it could save me about a minute. Okay. So now transformation. The meaning of transformation is simple. You know that. Okay. Transform. We will be transforming. We mean. We would be shifting. We would be playing with it. We would be playing with the independent variable. And the independent variable that we have taken in our case for longer discussion is the time. So, which means we would be playing with the time axis. Which means we would be playing with the x axis. We will be playing with the signal along the x axis. Now, we have three basic transformations along the x axis the first of them would be the time shifting the first is time shifting the second is time scaling and the third would be time reversal the third would be time reversal so we discuss uh, uh, each of them one by one so the first we C is the time shifting, all right? Time shifting. Now, as the name suggests, so the signal would be shifted either towards the left or towards the right. The signal would be shifted either left or right along the axis. And what does this shift left or right mean? This means that the signal would either be advanced or it would be delayed. The signal would either be advanced or delayed. Which means that if we have a signal x of t, let's say x of t, and if we apply the time shifting, time shifting, so, so we have a signal x of t minus t naught. We have a signal x of t minus t naught. Isn't it so? It is. Now, if this t naught, now depending on this t naught, we have the shift, we have the advance or we have the delay. We have two cases. If t naught is positive, so wait, I did this with the wrong color, right? Let me do this with the black color. So I would then, it would then be more clear. We have a signal x of t, we have applied the time shifting, we have a new signal x of t minus t naught. Now this t naught would decide what? The advancement or delay of the function. Now if this t naught is positive, so this means what? That the signal has been delayed. Signal has been delay t naught is positive means a signal has been delayed and the signal delay means that it has been shifted to the right shifted to the right and i will confirm it from the book as well if t naught is positive we have a delay yes and shifted towards the right yes and similarly similarly if this t naught is negative T naught is negative, so this implies that the signal has been advanced, and and the advancement would mean that the signal has been shifted towards the left. Is that fine? Now we see an example to it. Now let me tell you that this is not true only for this continuous time signal as I have mentioned over here. This is equally true for a discrete time signal as well. This is equally true for, for the discrete time signal as well. Now let's have an example over it. So let's say we have it like this, okay. Let's say a function is given which is say x of t. All right. And let's say this is the function. This is still 2. This is 0. This is 2. 
an easy function, right? So now let's say this is x of t. Now we want to find out x of t minus 2. x of t minus 2. x of t minus 2. Which means that this would or wait. Alright. So have a look. Now if x of t minus 2. So we will put the value equal to t minus 2. Okay. So have a look. Over here we have a t is equal to 0. We have the value of uh, a, a 2. Okay. So now we would put t minus 2 equal to 0. t minus 2 equal to 0. Over here we have t equal to 0. We have x of t equal to 2. Right. Now the value x of t equal to 2 will occur at t minus 2 equal to 0 which means this would imply that at t is equal to 2 we would have x of t equal to 2. So t is equal to 2 we have the x of t value equal to 2. So this is 2 this is 2. Right now at x of t equal to 1 we have the same uh, at t equal to 1 we have the same value of 2 so we do for the large limit. So t is equal to 2. So at t is equal to 2, we have the value of x of t equal to 2. So over here, have a look, we will put t minus 2 equal to 2. t minus 2 equal to 2 would imply that t is equal to 4. And this would imply that x of uh, x of 4 over here would be 2. So now here we would have 4. So which means that this would be the signal. So have a look. The same signal, the same signal, it has been shifted to the right by a particular value. Okay. Now we see the left shift of it. So have a look. Let me draw the axis like this. This is the time axis. And this would be now for, let's say, x of t plus 2. Now t is negative in this case. So the negative negative would become positive. So we have a t plus 2 in this case. So now at t equal to 0 we had x of 0 equal to 2. Right? Now we will put t plus 2 equal to 0. So if you put t plus 2 equal to 0 this would imply t is equal to negative 2. So over here we had x of 0 equal to 2. There we will have x of negative 2 equal to 2. Isn't it so? This basically represents x of 0. Over here, this basically represents x of 0. So now we will have 2 at negative 2. So this is let's say negative 2. And we have 2 over here. Alright. Now the next limit is 2. So if you put t plus 2 equal to 2. So this would imply now that t is equal to 0. So over here we had t x of 2 equal to 2 which means now over here we will have x of 0 equal to 2. x of 0 equal to 2. So which means this is the case. This is 0. So this is the function and have a look. The same function. The same function has now been shifted towards the right. Towards the left. And the shape of the waveform is the same. So which means that in the time shifting, shape of signal does not change. Is that fine? Alright. So this is about the first one. Okay. Now I would remove this, all of it. Now we see the next, that is the second is the time scaling of it. The time scaling of a function. So the time scaling of a function basically means the compression or expansion in the time domain. We see the compression or expansion of the signal in the time domain or along the time axis. All right. So let's say we have a function x of t 
and we imply we imply we apply the time scaling ts so ts would depend time scaling all right so time scaling so we have another function x of alpha times t x of alpha times t and this is equally true for the uh, discrete time signals x of n we apply we apply time scaling we have function x of alpha n now have a look the thing that depends over here is on this alpha so depending on this alpha we have two cases so the first of them is that the alpha magnitude is greater than one the magnitude of alpha is greater than one all right so it could either be greater than one or it could be less than one okay if it is equal to one so it is the same function so no time scaling so the first case is that the value of alpha it is greater than one and let me tell you that this alpha greater than one this corresponds to compression of the signal in the time domain and the value that alpha is less than one so this would imply a, a, an expansion in the time domain now compression means what that the same signal would occur in a less period of time in a less interval of time expansion means that the same thing will take more time to occur so this is basically shortening and longening of the signal so we as we understand this through a through an example all right okay so let's say we have an example and and, and this is let's say like this this is t all right we have a function x of t fine and, and and let's say we take a simpler function and it's like this let's say we take a triangular wave from now over here let's say this is a negative 2 this is a positive 2 well this ain't perfect so 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 wait now now this is a proper negative 2 this is positive 2 this is 2 okay so now have a look now we apply time shifting to it so x of t now we see x of let's say 2t let's say we say x of 2t so have a look this is x of 2t now now what will happen So first, if you have to determine the range of it, so if uh, in the first case you have a range from negative 2 to 2, right? Negative 2, 2, 2 is the range. So you do what? You divide it by the value of alpha. So if you divide it by the value of alpha, so the new range, which would be in this case, uh, is now what? It's uh, the new range for this case, it would be negative 2 by 2 is negative 1 and 2 by 2 is a positive one so the new range would be like this determine to determine the new range divided by the value of alpha so now have a look for t equal to negative 2 over here we have t equal to negative 2 so this implies that the value of the function x of t over here is 0 fine but over here have a look we have 2t so for 2t equal to negative 2 which means for t equal to negative 1 we will have x of t equal to 0 in this case so which means the value that it was occurring over here at t is equal to negative 2 would occur over here at t is equal to negative 1 so this is negative 1 5 now the next is at t is equal to 0 so if t is equal to 0 we have x of 0 equal to 2 so similarly over here we will put 2t equal to 0 so 2t equal to 0 means that t is equal to 0 again and x of 0 would be 2 so i have not left space for that uh, other case but let's say we see it so this is over here have a look now finally finally we have at t is equal to 2 we have x of 2 equal to 2 fine 
So over here we will put 2t equal to 2. This would imply that t is equal to 1 and we have x of 1 equal to x of 1 equal to 0. T of 2 is equal to 0, right? So we are back at 0 and this time we are at 1. So have a look, have a look. The same signal, the same signal is now taking less time to occur. It has been shift, it has been uh, compressed, you know. The shape of the waveform has changed. The slope of the waveform has changed. First it was starting at negative 2, now it's starting at negative 1. First it was ending at a positive 2, now it is ending at a positive 1. So this is the case of compression. And let me shorten this up. Now we see the next case. The next case is for time compression, the time expansion, you know. So let's say this is the this is the axis. So I I do it. you know I have not left space but let's say we see. So now uh, alpha's magnitude would be less than one. So let's say I divide it by 2, so let's say I have x of 0 0.5t, x of 0 0.5t in this case. So have a look now, when t is equal to negative 2, you have a x of negative 2 equal to 0. In that case, now you have a 0.5t, so 0.5t equals to, 0.5t equals to negative 2, right? So negative 2, so which means that t would now be equal to 2 divided by 0 0.5 would be 4. So t would now equal negative 4 and which means that x of negative 4 would now equal to 0. So previously it was at negative 2, now it would be at negative 4. So we have let's say this is negative 4, we have a 0 at this case. The next is at t is equal to 0. So now we have a 0.5 t equal to 0 and this is again the same case x of 0 is 2. So 0 is 2. Let me join or a little mistake but no problem. And finally for t is equal to 2. So over here we would have it for 0.5 t equal to 2. And this means that t would equal 4. And finally we will have it for x of 4 equal to 0. So we will come to 0 over here at x is equal to 4. So have a look. The same signal has now been expanded in the time domain. It has now been expanded in the time domain. It is now taking more time to occur than the original signal. So now from this I remember uh, something that our teacher explained it to us through an example. Okay, And my friend he responded. So the original signal let's say this is what our teacher said. Okay, The, the, the original signal is like this. My name is Salah Khan. This is the original signal taking a normal time to occur. Now if I expand it in the time domain, if I say that it will now take more time to occur the same signal, so I would say it like this, my name is Salar Khan. And, and once our teacher said it like this, one of my friends, Meher Ali, sitting with me, said uh, that this is Sir Gulzar speaking. Okay, now, now when he said, now the, the teacher now is come to compression. So he said now that the original signal is that my name is Salar Khan. So the compressed signal would be what? That my name is Salar Khan. <laughs> okay, and now once that he said it like this, my friend Mayra he said that this compressed signal is now an example of Sir Fahim Ali teaching power electronics. <laughs> Alright, so I'm sorry if I have, you know, no offense to anybody, but this was just for fun, right? An example over the compressed uh, and expanded signal. Sir Fahim Ali of power electronics, okay, not in the power generation course. And Sir Gulzar Ahmed with the expanded words. So, so that's it, okay. That's about the, the, the second case. Now we're taking a lot of time. So I remove this and we see the third one quickly as well. The final case, the third case, is of time reversal. Time reversal. 
this is also called as time inversion or this is also called as folding all right so now what is this so this basically is a special case of uh, of time scaling okay special case of time scaling and what means a special case of time scaling with alpha is equal to negative one so alpha is equal to negative one this is the time reversal okay so let me write this like this if we have x of t and i apply the time scale with alpha equal to negative one so we would have a function as x of negative t is that okay and now we see this through an example okay so so let's say i have a signal like this this is t this is x of t and, and let's say a simpler signal like this this is 3 okay and this is 2 so now the x of negative t would be what so i will draw it over here this is t and this is x of negative t so i have a look over here for t is equal to 0 the value x of 0 is 2 5 over here what would happen you will put negative t equal to 0 so this would again be t equal to 0 and x of 0 would be 2 so x of 0 would be 2 fine now the next case is for t equal to 3 so t equal to 3 implies x of 3 is 2 and here we will put negative t equal to 3 so this would imply that t is equal to negative 3 and this would imply that x of negative 3 equals 2 so which means we will come now over here and this is negative 3 and this is 2 and this is the waveform of the signal so have a look we we derive a, we derive a what a conclusion that the time reverse signal or the time inverse signal which is x of negative t is the mirror image of x of t that is of the original signal about the vertical axis which means about the y axis have a look this is this is like this okay we have a picture like this over here you took x of negative t it came like this so then Im mirror image over the y axis is that okay so let's see if i have any other point so i don't have any other point right so i would finish it over here so i say i finish it over here okay i believe i've taken a little longer time in this video but i believe the basic concept is clear as well so see that's all for today see you in the next lecture very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves and everyone around you goodbye